What is up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Bryce Crawford and if you're watching this, you either missed church or couldn't make it or something happened to where you couldn't get to church today. So you're watching this video to get in the Word, start your Sunday morning off. Maybe it's not Sunday, maybe you're watching this later in the week or earlier in the week. So welcome, my name is Bryce Crawford. Um, I'm so glad you're here. Um, this is the second video I've made on the series. I'm gonna try to post one every Sunday. So I'm super excited at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So be ready 10 a.m. Eastern time every week. Super excited to do this. I absolutely love it. Um, today we're going to be in Psalm 23, one of my favorite passages. We're going to be breaking it down. What does it mean? It's super exciting. So before we get into it, let's just jump into a word of prayer and then we'll dive right in. Father, thank you for this day. I'm so thankful for whoever is watching this video or listening to it. So Father, I pray that you touch their heart and that you speak to them that you pierce their heart, Father, and that they know that they are loved and that they can hold to the truth that Scripture says. Father, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, if you want to follow along, we are in Psalms 23. I use the English Standard Version, so you can follow me on ESV.org or in your ESV Bible. If not, feel free to open up Scripture. I would love for you to follow along. Now, this is one of the most famous Psalms ever. Um, it's very short. A very beautiful one of my favorite one of my favorite passages of scripture ever. Let's start it off. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I want I want to, I want to break down this emphasis of God being our shepherd and us being the sheep. Sheep are a very dumb animal. They're very stupid. Without a shepherd, they will wander off or maybe fall off a mountain or, or get lost and they'll be led astray on the wrong path. They won't be on the right path or they could die. They could be eaten alive by another animal. Sheep are a very stupid animal. Without the shepherd, they could do something that they shouldn't be doing or wander off or possibly be killed or be injured, be hurt, right? But with the shepherd, the shepherd keeps them in line, keeps them on track and keeps them on the path that they're on. And not only that, he protects them. That's his job. He protects the sheep and guides the sheep. So we must realize that God is the ultimate protector over our lives and he guides us, right? He has this path laid out and he knows what's best for us. And although we think we know better than God and we try to wander off from the path, God wants to steer us down this right path, right? But we must trust in the shepherd. That's what I love about it. Um, verse 2 says, He leads me beside still waters. Verse 3, He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. He brings restoration to the soul. There is nothing greater than the one who breathed the life into us breathing restoration into our soul. It's a beautiful thing. I love verse four. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Sheep are actually very comfortable around the shepherd because they know that they're being protected. They, they aren't afraid of what is to come because they have a protector around. So we must hold fast to this truth. No matter what trial and tribulation we go through, God is protecting us. He is watching over us. There is a spiritual realm in which Satan is trying to do things to us. And although we may experience pain, although we may experience hard times, God is still there. God is protecting us from way more. In Job, in Job 1.10, I believe, um, Satan is trying to wreak havoc over the earth. And God says, um, why not my faithful servant Job? And Satan's response is, have you not built a hedge of protection around Job? We oftentimes forget of the hedge of protection that the Lord has around us, right? The Lord is protecting us from way more than we think is going on, right? So we must remember, He is protecting us. So even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though we go through hard times, we must fear no evil because God is with us. He's always been with us and He will stay with us. Verse 5, you will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You will anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. He's preparing a table before you in the midst of your trial and in the midst of, of your enemies, my friend. He's preparing something great and preparing you from something incredible for his kingdom and for his name's sake. He's preparing you for that in the midst of your trial and in the midst of your enemies. Beautiful thing. Verse six, the last verse, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We find peace we find peace in the house of the Lord. Goodness and mercy follows God, right? So when we, when we, when we have 
when we seek God with our whole heart. Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. When we seek God and follow him, we will find goodness and mercy because goodness and mercy comes from God. Good things come from God. We can find nothing good in this world. That's why we can't stray away from the path that the shepherd is leading us down. We can't stray away from it. We must remember that he is the ultimate protector and that nothing but good things come from God. And we must remember that. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I, I want to propose a question. Sorry, this is a little bit of a shorter one. I want to propose a question to you. Where are you dwelling? And I want you to ask these questions. These are these three questions to ask yourself, to reflect over after reading this passage. Where do you find your security? Where do you find your significance? And where do you find your satisfaction? Guys, I love you. I hope you have a blessed week. I hope you have a great night, a great day. And stay blessed. Continue to seek the Lord wholeheartedly, my friend. It's the best decision you'll ever make. All right, bye, guys.